This is K-12 Tech Talk. K-12 Tech Talk. The podcast by K-12 Techs. For K-12 Techs. Real conversations, real arguments, and real banter on trending K-12 technology topics and issues. Live from the somethingcool.com studios, this is the K-12 Tech Talk Podcast. Did you like that dramatic pause? I am Josh. With me, as always, are my friends, Mark. You talking to me? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think, Mark, he just let you know that you're just a colleague to him. I, I, you I threw me off. You yeah. threw me off. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so Mark and Chris are with me. This is episode 139. Um, let's see, where are, are we? Chris is in a mood, so we'll get to that in a second. Uh, well, I guess I'm we can o- just, I'm okay. we can just do it now. Uh, Chris, what, what, uh, what has you in a mood? So we, um, if you're on the K-12 Tech Pro community, uh, I've discussed this some. If you're not on there, you should get on there because we get to be fully transparent. Are they uh, sending us advertising checks yet? No, we don't because make we money talk over about- there. We talk about them a lot. They're good guys over at K-12 <laughs> Tech Pro. Nonetheless, um, it's no secret that my school district is moving away from Tyler Sis and going to... Can I say who we're going to? I think it's known, I, right? Yeah, I think it's known because you and I have talked about this several times. Uh, we're going to Infinite Campus. Uh, the plan was to go over Christmas break. We were going to be one of the mid-year conversions. Um, so we've been doing quite a bit of training and some data checks and the whole bit. And then this week we learned that we need to postpone that and kick it to August. Now. Okay. Time out. (laughs) Time out for just a second. Let's unpack some of these statements. There was a collective holding of breath or I, I don't know how to put it. A collective. Ooh. About you going at Christmas anyway, from, Sure. A, a number of our friends, you know, because that that's a that's a bold move, man. Let's see how it pays off. Um, so it's, it's I was ready. I felt really good. I felt really good about it. Um, it was going to let our counselors work in the sys that they know well to build second semester. Uh, you know, to do sure. to do all scheduling changes. At, Like, they could be in before they left for break. Uh, That way, when they come back in January, you know, you're going to have new kids come in, but you're going to get to work with a smaller pool of new students as opposed to you that went in August when, like, it was big go time on a lot of things. And you had to learn uh, master schedule and scheduling in the new system to prepare for the new school year. Yes. Uh, So we were kind of sold on this idea of – we get to have our data perfected before we leave for Christmas break, press the button over break. We've trained up uh, for many, many days prior to break. When they come back, they know the new system. The data is in there. It's ready to fire off and go. Uh, we were gearing up for such a thing. We had timeline lined out, looked really good. Well, this week, and I won't go into great details, but uh, we had a Zoom call with uh, infinite campus and there w- were high concerns about state reporting being accurate if we continued to move uh that they sh- that 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 data accuracy could not be insured hmm. uh yeah. in regard to state reporting which is a pretty it, big it, deal yeah and and that's what's important right because that's what districts in in Missouri anyway get paid off of is especially that attendance right. record um, so that's definitely not something you want to screw up in. And in it really conversion. comes down to, so in Missouri, there's this thing called October cycle uh, and you upload all your kids and what classes they're taking and all that kind of good stuff. And then there's June cycle, yeah. right, Josh, that does, yeah. did that stuff happen? How did that stuff pan out? Right. Well, there are unique identifiers in October that have to match up with data in June and moving from one sys to another, uh, it could not be. It was determined that it could not be proven that those things were going to match up well, which is a big deal. Yeah, 
It, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. So what was, um, what was the feeling of your staff? I'm, I'm sure there was immense heartache on your part to begin with. I, but- I have, it's been, you know, that was yesterday. And then today I would say, and I was texting you guys kind of play by play actually. Uh, when I texted my blood is boiling, it was, <laughs> um, I feel like I handled it professionally. Um, I would expect nothing, nothing other than you <laughs> handling that professionally. What, what was the, was it a conversation about like, maybe we should push to August or was it the vendor saying you're moving to August? Yes. The vendor was saying we were not going at break. Oh, and then it was conversation about when we wanted to go next year. Well, what's it's your other option? I mean, well, there August. were three summer school, so August, or we could dabble with preschoolers in February, March, you know, when they kind of do their screenings. And then you kind of have like the new system just with like your preschool kids kind of in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We could mess with summer school. Yeah. And the, our whole deal with summer school is we have a lot of uh, temporary staff for summer school, secretaries even. Oh. So you're not going to have like your temp secretary working in the brand new system. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't make any sense. So then we land on August. Hmm. Um, wow. <laughs> pretty pretty cool. <laughs> uh, so, of course, it, it, it has a lot of stuff to be figured out like we were moving from one messaging system to another for you know phone call and text and we hadn't taken action to spin one down to spin one up that needs to change we had told previous sis hey see ya (laughs) and i had to say hey can we hang out for like six more months (laughs) um and then we were moving to a different a special education uh, program for our IEPs that we, you know, we're doing that over Christmas break to be in line with this. Well, that could have been postponed, uh, right? But that's that's well underway. Like, there's no changing that. Uh, so there's a lot to not unpack on a podcast uh, that that will that will be happening, but. Uh, this morning, I did the email out. I'm, I mean, I had, of course, several phone calls with my superintendent that was very supportive, with my special services director that was very supportive, with my CIS coordinator that was very supportive. I think the whole team sees this isn't, like, our fault. This right. isn't what we would want. Right. Uh, you want what you plan. Um, but what can you do? I mean, we need to know that we're going to succeed and we need to know that our data is going to be accurate. So that's what we do. We pivot on the thing. So uh, I would just say if anyone goes through something similar ever with a project right now, I feel like I did the right call to like, as soon as we knew this, uh, we've told everybody. Uh, right. I didn't want it to be like a couple a of days surprise. going by and we're still trying to like figure out or like we're telling some people, but not others. Uh, we told the whole crew, uh, you know, there's a, I mean, it affects everybody, right? Everybody knew what what was going down, secretaries, counselors, principals, food services, the whole bit. So we told all those department heads, all those people involved. Um, and then we're just going to see what happens next. Pretty cool. Hmm. So um, actually, you know what? We'll get into that in a second. Um, Chris, do you want to tell us about Fortinet real quick? One of our proud sponsors. Sure, Fortinet, who does deliver when they say they're going to deliver? A proud sponsor of the K-12 Tech Talk podcast. Uh, You can email Chris at FortinetPodcast at (laughs) Fortinet.com. I'm not salty. I'm fine. You know, I was I was like, is this going to be like Chris going on a rant for for five, ten minutes? But you were very subdued. And then, yep. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, just went for the jugular. So it, it'll... I'm hoping, I'm hoping that said sis, they're, they're going to listen long enough. They're going to be like, oh, that was fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to it'll listen be... to the whole episode uh, <laughs> to, to to know if I go into the ditch. 
<laughs> we're going to raise those listens. Those those PR guys are going to have to listen to the whole episode on this one. Wow. Um, so I spent a couple days. I was at a conference uh, earlier in the week, and I got to spend some time with uh, our buddy Chris Illingworth from Fortinet, and uh, got to hear about all the cool stuff that Fortinet's doing. And they had their voice expert at the conference uh, that he was talking to me about. A couple other schools that uh, have gone top to bottom. Fortinet switching, Fortigate, all the fun stuff. So uh, they can do it all. Um, so now we're on to the news segment. Mark, do you want to tell us about the? I'm I don't want to pronounce this county wrong because I this could go very badly. Oh, uh, that's all Mark you, right there. I see it. Uh, yeah. So Josh, you shared this story a couple of weeks ago with us, or maybe a week ago, and uh, uh, this is a school district, or it was. A County actually out in yeah. was it Arizona, Pinal yeah. County. Uh, and Pinal. they were hit with a Pinal. 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 Uh, hit with the ransomware to attack their payroll system. So, mm. uh, ouch, it, it, it caused their uh, payroll to be unavailable and they were working to pay staff and pay employees. So, something to think about if you uh, are, are at risk of, of ransomware on your payroll, what is your backup plan? Uh, because you may be able to run a couple of days without uh, access to the system, but you definitely cannot run through a pay period without paying your employees. So definitely a lesson. That was 14 districts that were in that county were were hit. And that's what Uh, struck me about the story was that it was 14 districts in the county. I guess they share payroll services, I guess. Um, Could you imagine all of the districts in your county losing payroll losing a system for one like if they all had a shared communal system losing a system for the entire county i mean that you talk about messing up services for a number of kids but then that one system turns out to be payroll uh it's a big deal that's a huge deal yeah now one word of advice uh, and you can put this in your plan is uh depending on how you do your payroll uh you can have the bank reissue the last check uh, so obviously that will work better at some times of the year than others. But if you are unable to run payroll, uh, you can always, uh, or hopefully you can always reissue the last paycheck and that will, uh, definitely hold over your, uh, your, your ransom, your recovery plan just a little bit longer if you need to. So that really? is a great idea. I didn't know that. Well, I, this all depends on how you do a payroll, who's doing payroll. Uh, but one option I have heard is is uh, is that districts have asked the bank to reissue the last paycheck or or to reissue the last check. So that's an option or or it, it, maybe it is an option for you to explore. Um, but if you're going to lose your payroll system, uh, you want to make sure you have a backup plan. Hmm. Learning so many things today. Yeah. Here's the deal, Josh. I'm going to call you out on that. Mark has shared that tip before on this podcast. Must have been an episode when I wasn't on. Yeah. That means you don't listen. Yep. I don't. And that, that needs to be established. I, I I don't go back and listen because I'm no, 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 I'm no. a horrible critic. I'm talking about critic. in the moment. Oh, no, I, li- I listen in the mm. moment. Just ask my wife. <laughs> hey, Josh, did you hear that Chris's SIS implementation got pushed back? I didn't even know he was changing the SIS. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, on a related note, the other thing in the news, uh, uh, MS Isaac came out with an advisory. If you're not subscribed to the MS Isaac advisories, please Isaac. do so. Isaac. I, yeah, sorry. Isaac. He listened. You see that, Chris? He listened to me. <laughs> uh, and they had an advisory a week ago uh, that that recommended that not even I wouldn't say recommended, but but advised that these threat actors are changing more from encryption tactics to data exfiltration. So even though the, the payroll uh, one that I just mentioned wasn't encryption, uh, this kind of change or, or refocusing of threat actors to data exfiltration is scary to think about because it is a lot cheaper, it is a lot easier, and it is a heck of a lot faster to steal your data and then threaten you uh, that you're going to leak that they're going to leak it on the uh, the internet if you don't. Hey, so we have seen double uh, ransomware hits for quite a long time. But I think threat actors are finding it's just a lot easier to steal the data uh, from multiple districts rather than to spend your time encrypting one district system. So something to think about. And uh, 
out with the old data. Uh, don't try not try not to have any sort of data lingering on your, around in your systems or on user devices as much as you possibly can, because all of that is risk. Yeah, and if you get lucky, if the bad guys get lucky and hit a payroll system for fourteen districts, you know, holla. Some, yeah, somebody's <laughs> getting paid. <laughs> um, so I went to the Mornet conference uh, Monday, Tuesday this week, and. Uh, Chris, was it Monday you had your data call or Tuesday you had your data call? Tuesday. So I had I had asked you if you were going to Mornet, and you said no, that you were neck deep in, in campus. And then when I called you on Tuesday, you said, you know, now last summer when you were in campus and couldn't go to Midwest Tech Talk, and now now I get I, it. I understand it now. And yeah, and we the, had a lot of people not come to Midwest Tech Talk, and they talked about Infinite Campus or whatever they were going to, right? Alaska. And, and I was like, I mean, that's not going to stop me. <laughs> but Tuesday, I was in, and then we'll get back to you, Josh, because you're probably not listening to what I'm saying. But no, I'm not. I was in a Zoom call from, it was like 9, nine to 1, and these calls are so long, like, and I, you can tell these people are trained up because somehow they're still eating lunch and going to the bathroom, but you never, they don't take breaks. Like I don't even understand Yeah, because I continue to be the awkward one on the zoom call. That's like, Hey, can I take two minutes? Uh, anyways, like nine to one. And then I went from like one, I, cause also on top of this, we're moving to it. And this is a whole nother thing, but a new tech department service desk, uh, because that's great to do in the middle of the year as well. I'm full of great ideas for my department. A few uh, moments later. <laughs> that's that's that that was one to three. One to three and then a follow up IC call from like three to four. I get it. My whole day was a Zoom call. And that whole <clears throat> that whole day was for naught. The next day when they tell you we're moving to <laughs> August. <sighs> I I did turn on MFA for oh. this new sys that we're not going to use for several months. It's it's locked down. <laughs> okay, so Google I, single sign on works like a champ <laughs> on that thing by the way. How there will was... be there will be a single sign on in the next 6 months and that's the stuff. <laughs> Well, well, Mornet, what? <laughs> yeah. So I, I went to Mornet. Uh, I presented on Monday with our high school librarian about our student-led help desk. It was it was really cool. I, I told our librarian that I felt like it, it was a success because no one got up and left in the middle of the presentation. You know, that and that happens at conferences. Yep. I get it. You get halfway through or 10 minutes in and you realize the session isn't what you thought it was. Um, but we didn't have anybody leave our session early. So I, I considered that a wild success. Um, I presented yesterday as well, um, and no one left that session either. So I, I was hitting on all cylinders, apparently. Nice. Um, it was funny yesterday. Uh, the session I did was uh, about the sock that we have, <clears throat> and I titled the session How to Sleep Better at Night, Vacation, and something else. Um, and I used it as a as an excuse to show vacation pictures. Chris, you would have... You would have been happy. <laughs> it was every slide had at least one picture of me in Alaska with my family or Florida this summer from this summer. It was funny. Uh, so anyway, the big topic, besides seeing friends and, and cohorts from around the state, the big topic was AI and education. The, the educators, because the first two days of the conference is educators, the second two days is technical people. Um, the keynote for both strands of the conference was about AI. Um, and it, you know, everybody's heard of Chet GPT and Bard and, you know, the, the big name ones, but there were sessions, um, about lesser known ones and, and really ones that were tailored to education. The one that I came home with and shared with my wife was magic school dot AI. Um, Mark, as a former teacher, have you, have you seen this site yet? Magic no, school dot AI. Google go, it right now. Go to it right now. What subject did you teach Mark Homek? I mean, I was elementary, so I did all of them. Oh, I was going to say, you, you probably told me and I didn't listen. Um, so go to Magic School AI or dot AI and pick a grade level and a topic, and it will create a lesson plan for you 
Uh, so my wife has been playing mm. with that for the last, I don't know, day and a half or so. And this morning while she was getting ready, uh, I got out of the bathroom and she's like, yeah, I just created a lesson plan about farms and numbers and learning numbers and letters. And uh, it was, she was pretty impressed at how detailed uh, the lesson plan content was in it. So mm. all of these sessions were about the responsible use of AI in education specifically, and more or less saying that, you know, and we've all seen the stories that people are comparing AI to the calculator in education, that it's a, that it's a tool and that if teachers are using AI, uh, and, and more centric to the ones that are for education, that it's, it's a starting point. It's a jumping off point for creating lesson plans. You know, you're still, you're still going to have to put thought into it and content into it to refine the lesson plan because it may not align exactly with what your district has uh, or you just may want to change it <clears throat> or give it a little bit more detail. Uh, it they're, they're a great jumping point. And Mark, you would be happy because I would say, well, I know the keynotes mentioned this and several of the other sessions that I attended mentioned that at no point should educators be pasting student data into the uh, prompt areas of the AI tools. Amen. So I know you're a big, uh, you're a big watchdog on that. I am. I Did am. you create a lesson plan, Mark? Uh, no, I haven't. I, I got to sign up. I, I haven't read the terms of service yet, so I'll do that tonight. But it looks like a cool site. I'll definitely take a look at it. Yeah, actually, yeah, and share it with your wife too. I'm sure she would enjoy it. So. Yeah. When I talked with Mark about Mornet earlier and how the, the main topic was AI, um, that brought up COSIN and the Council of oh, the Secret Society, the Council of Great City Schools, recently released a readiness checklist on generative AI. Um, so, Mark, do you want to talk about this checklist? We're going to kind of step through it, right? Yeah, so uh, COSIN partnered up with the Council of Great City Schools. Uh, if you're not familiar with either of those organizations, they are... Uh, I'm huge fans of both of them. COSIN, obviously, is a consortium of school networking. Uh, definitely runs a great conference. Council Gracie Schools is one that I'm a member of, and it is for larger districts. Uh, but they're very aligned in in uh, their priorities. And so they came together uh, with some help from some of the big tech firms as well, uh, including AWS and, uh, and a few school districts, and came up with a readiness checklist. And... Uh, I had a chance to talk to the author, one of the authors yesterday uh, about this, and he was talking about how this is not meant to be a uh, hard and fast checklist that you're going to go through and complete it and, and then you're done and you're ready. It's meant to be more of a conversation starter or a, or a, almost a, an organizer, organizer uh, for you to go through and to think about. And as you kind of go through these uh, items on this checklist to say, you know, have we done that or where are we on this one? Uh, because, you know, generative AI is constantly changing and it's really not a one-stop shop uh, towards this. It's more about preparing your district and preparing your leadership for it. So given that you spend a lot of time with Mornet talking about AI and this checklist just came out this week, uh, let's dive into this one a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to pull it up here and we'll link it in the show notes afterwards as well. Uh, but it's divided into a series of questions in uh, about five or six different categories. So let's talk about the first category, and that is around executive leadership. Does your leadership, this includes you as a kind of the tech director or, or technical leadership, are you prepared? Have you thought about the strategy for rolling out AI? Have you thought about uh, the policies that you need to put in place, the policies that you already have in place? Josh or Chris, where are you uh, when it comes to these conversations with your leadership and your policies? Uh, I think it's, we haven't gotten there yet as far as strategy. We had a, um, admin meeting actually this morning, uh, and I thought about bringing it up there, but I wasn't prepared enough with examples yet to bring it up. <clears throat> it's going to be, it's going to have to be one of those things that whether we like it or not, it's coming and it's going to be used whether we like it or not. So we need to get in front of it to kind of set the guardrails at which it needs to operate in from our faculty standpoint. Um, so yeah, we, we have not really started down that path yet, which is probably like, we should probably be in front of it already, but we're not. Chris. We right now are following the same website 
requests like we do anything else. If it's an educational game or not, blah, 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 blah. We let the teacher dictate to tech department if they're wanting to use it in the classroom or not. So I've had several of these, two, three of these uh, that are being blocked by our content filter uh, that we go ahead and open up because of a teacher request and I'll, I'll just let it play out. So I wouldn't say that's being in the game properly, but okay. that's how we're handling it. Well, one of the things they, they do discuss in the checklist is to review some of your current policies, uh, speak with instructional academic leadership. I will say that some of the challenges I've learned early on is that people really don't understand what generative AI is and how this is going to. And so I think, you know, introducing things like magic school AI or, or introducing chat GPT, showing people what it looks like, and then starting to spark some conversations about, you know, what is this going to mean for us? What are the, the challenges that we're going to have? What are the policy implications that it's going to have? Um, but I think you really need to build the awareness in order for people to your leadership to fully understand uh, that this is going to have major implications on you guys. I even had a couple uh, support tickets with chat GPT where teachers were saying that they're saying it's being blocked or it's down or whatever. Well, it's because yeah. it's, it's down, like not us. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, it's just one of those days where chat GPT is having some issues or whatever. Uh, they need to, you know, they need to be educated that this is new technology, like mm -hmm. not yeah. quite uh, have all the ducks in a row yet. Well, the other thing too, that this policy really addresses or, or this checklist, excuse me, addresses is that these, tools are going to have other types of unintended consequences. So for example, we're, we're most of people talk about, well, are people going to cheat with this or are people going to, you know, write their evaluation or, or upload student data. But the other side of this is that these generative AI tools are going to um, recommend certain uh, ways of thinking, or they're going to, they're going to write a policy for you. And that policy is going to have an opinion towards it. Uh, and so it really goes into the equity of generative AI and bias and, and are you prepared for, you know, people potentially introducing uh, bias through generative AI. So that's, uh, you know, one of the first sections of this is around leadership and strategy, not just a strategy for handling it today, but how are you going to adopt it tomorrow? Did you guys see the, the place? I um, maybe I should find the article. They said, hey, AI, make a robot that can walk. And it made this like squishy thing that when you blow air into it, it can scoot across the floor. I saw something about that this morning. Anyway. Good story. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> second section is allowed around legislation, administrative rules. This is about do you know what the rules and laws are in your state, to be honest with you? I don't think there are too many states that have anything around no. AI, so it's pretty pretty quick. But but definitely the the readiness is around making sure that you're aware of what your state's laws are, um, and if they don't specifically address AI, making sure that they uh, at least address data privacy. Third section is around the use policy. Uh, do you have things written in your acceptable use policy, your academic and uh, integrity policies, um, or do you need to write a new policy? Personally, we've tried to avoid modifying existing policies and just trying to use the, the acceptable use policy as is and kind of translate how generative AI fits into the AUP or the, uh, the academic integrity policy. That goes uh, back to the comment about, is this the new calculator app? You know what I yeah, mean? Like right. we, don't, we don't dig into the details of, right. oh man, we went from chalkboard to whiteboard to interactive board. We got to write a new policy for how teachers are going to use the interactive board. Right. Like you don't, you don't do that, you know? Right, right, right. But, you know, to that point that Josh said earlier, if your, you know, staff are uploading sensitive student information into the tool, does your AUP cover that yeah. particular act, even though it's not specific to generative yeah. AI? Uh, the fourth category is around equity concerns. And this is a very big topic because as I mentioned earlier around making sure your leadership is understanding of it. Um, but do you have uh, practices and policies? Or are you ready for uh, the equity of generative AI, not just in what the, the content is, but the access to it and uh, who has access to it? Um, do you have students using these tools at home? If you're blocking it on your school devices, do you create an equity issue where those who have the means to have their own device at home 
can suddenly access generative AI tools and use that on their homework. But meanwhile, the students who are using district devices are not able to. So that's yep. really where they talk about the the equity issues of it. Uh, and we've and not, we've yeah. we've experienced that. We had teacher that knows that these particular kids used uh, Chat GPT, whatever. Uh, well, they it's not they didn't do it on the Chromebook. Uh, they had other means to it. Yeah. the The next major section is just around your operational readiness, your procurement policies, your staffing abilities. Like, are you able to sustain and maintain these kinds of tools if you start to bring them on full time? Uh, if you're going to be bringing on a new tool, we're all used to having to go through procurement hoops and staffing challenges to uh, to train something on it. But that's, you know, these generative AI tools are going to be not just how to use the tool, but the, the policy implications. The third category uh, within the readiness checklist is around your data readiness. This is one that I'm super concerned about, at least within my own district. If you start to introduce uh, let's say you're a Google or a Microsoft district and you start to introduce AI tools into that uh, environment. Is it going to start scrubbing all of your data and pulling out anything it wants to? Um, or do you have your data segmented and, and appropriately tagged? Uh, so uh, I am worried about the day that uh, Google or Microsoft attaches an AI tool and allows you to scrub uh, all of the data contained in all of your Google Sheets and Excel Sheets and says, okay, now write me a letter showing me why I need a raise and you have not set up your data privacy correctly. And suddenly it's accessing data, private data within maybe your HR director or your, uh, your superintendent's uh, drive in order to, to write that letter. So that's around data governance, data privacy, data readiness, and data quality. No, not, not too scared about that. No, no, mm -mm. we don't have any data. <laughs> Technical readiness. The the uh, fourth category, uh, making sure your identity management is ready. We already heard Chris's identity is fully set up and ready to go in his new SIS, even before he's live. Uh, technical jerk. controls. I know. <laughs> uh, fifth category, kind of what goes along with it, is your security readiness, cybersecurity training, security safeguards. Uh, do you have a security framework in place to govern this? And then. The last category is your legal and risk management. So are you ready to uh, handle this with your lawyers and your uh, risk mitigators or your legal team? Uh, do you have any sort of loss notification? Should somebody upload sensitive information and now you've gotten a data breach? Uh, so that's the final category. Uh, but I think all of this touches upon some of the things that we've talked about, both the exciting side of AI, as well as kind of the concerns and, and scary side of it. So if you haven't had a chance, it's a long document, but it's very, very easy to kind of run through and see where you are and, uh, and use this as a sentence starter. So we'll, we'll link this in the show notes. And that is the COSIN Council Gracie Schools AI Readiness Checklist. You know, it's interesting at the, well, when I was at the conference and there were all these sessions on AI, one of the terms that I heard that I had not heard before, um, I was presenting a on on the SOC on the EDR managed by the SOC that we have and somebody mentioned that a competitor to the product that I own has AI managed or yeah AI managed EDR not SOC managed EDR and I that's the first I'd heard of an AI uh tool managing an EDR um which brought up a whole discussion with David at NTP about Sentinel One and and their tools and what David offers is a truly manned human eyeballs looking at um in their sock looking at the EDR and managing that EDR and he asked us to tell everybody that if you currently have Sentinel One it doesn't matter the level it could be core it could be complete complete um if you already have that and your renewal is coming up to contact David because he can likely save you money and you'll get a managed sock on top of it. So email David um, at what's his email address, Chris D Ren. Is that right? D Ren D W R E N at NTP dash I N C dot com. That's in the podcast description too. Yeah. So he can, he says he can probably save you money on your Sentinel one renewal. And if you're not a Sentinel one customer, if you're with one of the other competitors, one of the big boys that are out there, 
Um, I was talking to somebody at the conference that uh, was with one of the other big boys and David saved him um, not quite 50%, but pretty darn close to it on his hmm. uh, per, per seat licensing cost. And that was with a managed sock. So I, we I like David. I'm sorry. We like David. We like David. Um, I have a scenario to run by you guys. Is this Mark, about AI? It is not about AI. It okay. is about one of my favorite things, printers. If someone comes to you and says, because we've had a couple instances of this recently. Um, I, I either bought my own printer or mm. an outside organization bought me a printer. Will you come set it up? Or I bought my own software. Will you come set it up on my PC at school? What's what's your standard operating procedure one. for that? Or, or how would you respond to that? Well, Chris is already dinging the buzzer or hitting the buzzer. I, ha- goes, I had it this week. Dude, what is it? What's going on? Um, so last month had a request, had the question asked, hey, it's two people in the same room. This person B said, hey can I bring in a printer? And I said, no, sorry, we don't support personal devices. We can't touch them, blah, 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 blah. A month later, this week, the first person that would be the lead person in the room said, hey, I have a printer that needs to be installed. Um, and it clicked in my head that I should know that this person doesn't have a printer and they shouldn't have a printer. Um, so even though I said, hey, we don't support that, they still brought it in. And we don't. We say no. We took a we took a district stance that we're reducing printers and support on printers and paper right. and toner and ink. Uh, so I say sorry, uh, and I do mean that. Uh, I love a printer sitting beside me. I understand all the conveniences of it. Keeps uh, but, you warm. But we don't we don't support it. We don't do it. We don't touch it. And the same with software. We have an approval process for that. You work with the curriculum department. Uh, you work with your building principal, and both of those work with tech department to approve those things. So we say no to that as well. When you say no, do you mean no, no. it's not allowed, or no, I'm not going to support it? No, it's not allowed, nor do we touch it because we didn't purchase it with district money. If the person plugs in the USB, you know, they're, they've, they're smart enough to know how to hook up a printer. If they plug the usb in and it works and you come back three days later and see that they've plugged it in and it works what are you gonna do i probably pull it would you really yeah i'm kind of that guy wow Wow. i did not take you as that guy (laughs) i uh i mean I, i yeah we don't support it mark what's what's your uh overall take on this uh, it's kind of the same thing, except I'm not going to go back and pull a printer. I, 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 <laughs> thank you. I, I mean, I, I just say we don't, we don't support it. Uh, you know, we don't, uh, there are certain things where we do, we do say you're not allowed to take a consumer printer and put it on the wireless. We're not going to oh, allow yeah, that. Right. Yeah. Um, but if somebody brings it in and wants to plug into a USB printer, I, I'm, I'm not going to get in the way with it, way of it. Uh, I'm just not going to send uh, somebody out to repair it. Right. And and I, I kind of, I've taken that stance as well, Mark. And I think, you know, when you, when you have that whole picture discussion with somebody about, okay, you know, it's, it's okay that someone else is providing this device for the district, but what about the paper? Because you know, they're not going to bring paper from home. What about the toner refills or ink refills that need to happen? Because you know, they're not going to do that, that, you know, they're going to expect the district to buy that. So, you know, by by gifting the district or by purchasing this two hundred dollar printer, you're immediately signing signing the district up for ongoing costs, um, and that's that's where the bigger issue comes in. Because I'm I'm sure your your districts are like mine; they've gone out of their way to standardize on certain types of printers so they can buy toner at a cheaper cost and yeah. buy support at a cheaper cost. Yep. Um. So yeah, no, that's that's interesting that you you've seen this recently too, Chris. I wonder if there's a trend or something something's going on yeah that's kind of strange i uh i would unplug it 
I, I might wait till after hours. I can't believe you would do that. But I this is what this is really how I feel. I would unplug it nicely from the wall from the computer. I'd wrap the printer up with those said cords. I take a piece of I'm assuming that there's printer paper in it. Well, sure. So I would take I would take the the printer paper out, but I would take one piece and I write a note. Um probably just less than 5 words like sorry not district printer. And then I do a follow up with email, probably a follow up with the building principal. Uh, wow! I do it. Weren't you the one that was supporting printers in every classroom not that long ago? Yeah. Sometimes I make mistakes. <laughs> and that's we had the title print- of tonight's episode. Yeah. Printer. Yeah. <laughs> like- printer scanner. <laughs> printer scanner copier. I which I I actually inherited that. Well. But previous school district, I supported that. Printer, scanner, copier in every elementary classroom. Yeah. Never again. Sometimes I make mistakes. (laughs) Like going live with sis at Christmas. A previous school district that my wife worked at as a school nurse. So we used to have... Mark, you're going to love my stories tonight. I know it. (laughs) You know, she, she she would work closely with these people uh that i did not work closely with you know to me you're just an elementary teacher oh just kidding mark you you weren't you were secondary though right no he was, was elementary i was elementary he I just know, said that, that we I just talked about it <laughs> neither one of you was, listen my f- teacher i've said this before my teacher friends are all secondary i kind of but there's just something a little ick about uh, any, anyway 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 those are all jokes those are all jokes so my wife would remind me that what I'm saying to her colleagues is going to come back to her because she sure. works with these people every single day. Sure. And I would forget that. So one time I had a teacher that at the start of the year, she took her two student desktop computers from one wall where the cabling went, you know, where there's jacks on the wall, and she moved it to a new location, and she uh, did a ticket, and she said, my computers won't uh, get on the network. Uh, this is before wireless days, right? So I did what I needed to do. I walked into the room. I looked at those computers. I saw that they belonged to a different wall. I picked up the entire desk with my hands and two computers on them, and I moved them to the new spot. I plugged them in, and I fixed it. And, like, the whole building knew I did that, as did my wife. Um, Came home, and that dinner was a little more awkward than normal. I make the hard call. You are mean. I don't think so. I mean, yeah, I, we we fight that struggle of, um, you know, I've moved my desk across the room. It, it seems like that happens every year. Do um, the thing. I'm not. I mean, we'll say move it back, but we're not going to. We don't move it back. I mean, I, that's. I think you have some built up rage. Chris, that needs to be I'm a, addressed. I follow, <laughs> that's just me following through. <laughs> Mark, as a teacher, how would you have handled Chris's response? Uh, I would never call Chris ever again for help. I know that never to allow Chris into my room if I need there, anything. Would there have been a, a union complaint? No, no, I don't. I don't do that. No. Okay. I, I take I, I take matters into my own hands. <laughs> so do I. Pick up desk. Move desk. Wow. Okay, Br- Chris. Brutal. You wanna... I, I think I'm different than that now. Uh, clearly not if you said you're going to unhook and wrap up a printer. Oh, yeah. I stand by. Yeah, you're right. Chris, you want to talk about Extreme Networks real quick as we wrap Extreme up? Networks, a proud sponsor of the K-12 Tech Talk podcast. You can email Dominic at dmayor at extremenetworks.com. I got my site engine all set up. I got Cloud IQ all set up. I am backing up my extreme switches. Uh, once a week, I get my configs backed up automated. And awesome. I feel really good about it. That's really cool. Well, Chris, here's to hoping in the next week uh, you guys formulate a good plan for uh, your Cisco Live in August. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> good luck. Hoping the new sis uh, gives you some uh, concessions, we'll say. 
thank you. I appreciate you guys a lot for your support. <laughs> and if it doesn't, I'm sure we will hear about it next week. Thanks for listening. Share us with your friends. Uh, we appreciate all the shares. Mark, you did uh, some math, and we officially broke 75,000 downloads, right? We did. 75,000 awesome. downloads. Thank you. And that's due to our friends like you sharing this podcast with your friends. And we're all friends together. Uh, yep. More than for, colleagues. More than more than colleagues. <laughs> Email us, k12techdoc at gmail.com. Tweet at us or access, whatever. Uh, we'll see you next. Uh oh, Chris has something to say. We are K12 Tech Talk, <sighs> and so are you. The views and opinions expressed on the K12 Tech Talk podcast are the personal opinions of Josh, Chris, and Mark, and do not represent the views or opinions of our sponsors or other organizations that we're affiliated with. The material and information presented here is for general information and entertainment purposes only. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.